What if we mixed chili flakes into your favorite ice cream? Don't worry, we promise not to go so far. But you agree that this step will help you curb your late night cravings. This is how the Netherlands converted their society from a car centric to one that enjoys kicking the paddles. Watch this documentary until the end to witness an eye opening transformation of a country that used to spew more pollution than the United States now to a nature loving society. Let us give you a sneak peek. The murder of children sparked the issue at first. Then the oil crisis prompted the president to go on live television and beg for less vehicle driving. And finally, policies such as high parking fees encouraged so many people to ride bikes daily. Now that we've piqued your interest, put your favorite coffee to brew and get ready to be surprised. Initially, there were 2.7 million motorcycles in the country throughout the 1920 to 1930s, compared to 68,000 cars, making it the golden age for riders. However, when World War II began, the German invasion not only stole half of the bikes people had, but their tire rations made it impossible for riders to utilize the vehicle. The five-year occupation does result in a significant decline in the general number of bike riders, leaving them delighted to drive autos. However, as German control was lifted, the country's GDP surged by a factor of five, making it relatively easy for even middle-class inhabitants to get and maintain automobiles. And let's be real, why would we make a salad in the kitchen if we can get a large pizza for just one dollar? Every day after that'll be a cheat day, unless you get a doctor's note. Returning to the story, after the bomb assaults destroyed highways, tunnels, and even bridges, the country was seriously damaged and required a completely new setup. Here, the government engaged an American planner to renovate Amsterdam in the same way that U.S. was in the 1960s. David Jokinen, who is well known for his work in the niche, proposed a magnificent plan for the city to have large highways and modernized roads. Even though the government initiated this strategy, it was destined to fail. Every year between 1960 and 1970, 3,000 individuals were killed by cars. 500 kids died in only 1971. This was the point at which the father journalist of a child named Simone wrote an extensive article on the front page of the newspaper quoting, Stop murdering the children which caused the entire country to pause and finally comprehend what they were doing. With this incident, protesters and activities came down on the road and burned the frigid hearts of people everywhere. Although everyone wanted change, they did not know how to achieve it. But as fate would have it, the oil crisis occurred within two years, boosting its cost by 300%. The prime minister urged people to finally look for a better outlook and a method to alleviate such a burden. Initiatives such as a Sunday car restriction were put in place. Even new red-striped roads were introduced for bike riders. However, the result did not expose any rainbows. Cities like Tilburg recognized that this goal would not be achieved with a few road measures alone. Delft, on the other hand, devised a $12 million plan to construct a city-wide bike network. As a result, they increased cycling by 6% while decreasing driving by 3%. In the Netherlands, bike lanes had increased by more than 70% by 1980. So let us take a step back and look at the broader picture. The deaths of children initially broke people's hearts, but the oil difficulties made them worried. However, the government acquired something similar to the iPad for a laptop that could pressure clients for immediate change. This is where they learned to bend their finger to get the butter out. As a result, the government turned many roads into car-free zones, except for emergency vehicles. Not only that, but they set a very low speed restriction with narrow roads and a lot of bumps. If that wasn't enough, the policy was introduced to expensive parking for car riders. And no matter how bad something is, if it's free or on sale, we'll take it. And in this situation, not only was cycling a cost-effective option, but it was also a healthy one. As per Euronews, around 60% of roundabouts in Dutch cities have a physically separated circular cycle track that runs around the roundabout intersecting its exits. When we watch Asian dramas, we are frequently stuck with how heavily cycling is used by the Chinese people. However, you'll be shocked to learn that the bicycle per capita in China is 0.4 compared to 1.3 in the Netherlands. This appears to be an excellent conversation starter for your next get-together. According to a recent survey, there are 23 million bicycles in the Netherlands, with 63% of Amsterdam residents using them regularly. Even their prime minister rides his bike to work. This is quite impressive. 
A Dutch person has claimed to bike almost 1,000 kilometers in a year, with 250 to 300 trips. To ensure that biking becomes the primary mode of transportation for people, the government started to construct massive parking lots. Utrecht constructed the world's biggest multi-story structure for cycle parking in 2019 that can accommodate 12,500 bikes at once. However, this was just for inner-city transportation. What about long-distance travel plans? The government has also covered its people in this regard. The trains have been joined with separate bike storage carriages. Not only that, but there are carriages in which you may keep your bike with you. Isn't it fascinating? They've also created a variety of cycles, like the cargo bike, carrier bike, e-bike, and city bikes, to help residents with deliveries, shopping, and even carrying their children. Also, as per National Institutes of Health, cycling levels in the Netherlands have substantial population-level health benefits. About 6,500 deaths are prevented annually, and Dutch people have half a year longer life expectancy. You may be shocked to find that in America, the percentage of adults who are deemed overweight has reached 38.5% compared to 22% in the Netherlands. Now that we're approaching the end of the video, feel free to suggest a topic for us to discuss next. Like the video and subscribe to our channel. We promise to keep the good vibes going. We'll see you in our next video.